Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tiano, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Goring Lover, but right now, with this funny looking flag and this guy named Herman, we're gonna take out uh, good old Sri Lanka first before we go to war with the entire sphere. And the Japanese want to support Sri Lanka, which is fine with us. We're looking pretty good. Last time we took out, I think, America. Um, and so we're looking pretty decent, as we've already landed here, and are pretty much just preparing for the end of the, pretty much a campaign. We've done very well in this campaign, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved, I love doing this whole campaign, it's just, it's just a lot of fun, you know. Playing as Papa Herman, it's always a lot of fun. So, hope you've enjoyed the campaign thus, but we must finish this uh, campaign with this episode, which will probably be the final episode. I can't imagine there'll be another episode after this, but you know, whatever. So, uh, a little bit of auto saving. I don't see any enemy divisions. Colombo is ours. And we want to get a candy eventually. Hello. Oh, we got candy. Kinda sweet. But with the peace conference is over, Ceylon is ours, and we also have the Indian subcontinent split into three. Uh, what are you? Metevabatung Bakhtrin, Zimmerman. Uh, Hindustan, led by. Oh, Heinrich. Oh, pretty good. And then, uh, Zentral Indian. And then we have Sud Ending. Auto it is. Awesome. So basically now we have a complete land border with those pesky people over there. The Viet Minh are not in their faction and sphere, huh? Invade these guys. Has it done the greatest betrayal? It's friendly to the German regime. Invade Nepal. Oh. The greatest betrayal, huh? Well, let's take a look at that state first. So we're over here. Ah. Requires one of the following. Alright, well, if you want to read this again, please go ahead. We're just going to auto-complete that one. Um, can we just do that, maybe? Do that. Gandin Podrang. Of course, it gives us time to build up our supplies through here, which are still not looking great, but we're almost there. Gate to this subcontinent, of course, which we already took out. It's fantastic. And then, I guess, you know what? Since we're here, we might as well do this one. The greatest betrayal. The invasion of India will be a likely a titanic effort. The country is home to millions upon millions, and the subcontinent itself is vast. The conquest of India is undertaking that we will be the subject of legend, and rightfully so, even still. Occupying the subcontinent will be a huge undertaking, even if the initial wars won easily. Luckily for us, there's another player who might just be interested in what we have to offer, the Azad Hind, for several decades. As said in Bengal, considering them themselves the true heirs and liberators of India, the two mutual the two's mutual hate, it is no secret to anyone. If we're able to convince the Azad Hind to join the pact and assist us with the conquest of India, we could wash our hands of having to garrison the subcontinent, leaving them to deal with occupying the country, which would save us another headache. The Azad Hind are unlikely to decline their desperate act, just not able to do so. They would take help from anyone who could offer it, and we're offering a deal they cannot refuse. Oh, and it's going to lag a little quite a bit. That's fine. And actually, you know, since we're here... Ish. Uh, we're almost done building those up there, but... Nepal. Oh, you already have a railroad here. It's not bad. Ooh. You can hear, here, here. Do that too, anyways. You're super close, but... Uh, so get that focus done. Can't, I'll be honest, I can't remember if I read this one or not, but Eclipse of the Rising Sun. The time for waiting is over, now's the time for, for fighting men, for warriors. The world will watch us closely, for the balance of power is about to drastically shift permanently. The sun is about to set on the Empire of the Rising Sun, and in its place will rise the Iron Eagle of the Reich. Our panthers are itching to blitz across the Manchurian Plains, and who are we to stop them? It is well time the Reich puts the Japanese in their planes once and for all. To our German comrades, seek Heil. You fight for your homes, your family, and your Reich. Your people demand nothing short of NC. Seize us here. More than a few members of Japan's fear have been hesitant in assisting the Japanese. They stand by, but will likely not be for long, even now. The Japanese are exerting all the influence they have to marshal their subjects and to get their soldiers to the front lines. We have an excellent opportunity in our hands. If we act fast, we may be able to convince a number of these members to abandon Japan completely and join our cause in exchange for freedom, money, weapons, or whatever else they want. Going rogue. Unlock a decision to get neutral nations in the conflict on our side of the war. Starve them out. With Manchukuo and Guangdong in her hands, Japan will be on a timer. It will be quickly apparent that, without these two vital regions, the Japanese economy will grind to a halt. Without raw materials and foodstuffs that the sphere countries on the mainland provide, Japan's war effort will simply not be able to sustain itself. Our men must hold fast, and is at hand. One last push and victory is ours. Do it for the fatherland, for Germans everywhere, seek Heil. And, but before we do that, we're going to invade Nepal, so we're going to take a little bit of time for that. Who are you the buy? You? Okay, get over here. We won't call everyone in here, because that's going to take forever, so we'll do that. And a couple more focuses in the meantime, such as burn the tinderboxes. Our opposition is fierce, to say the least. The Japanese fight nearly as fiercely as their own men. We are paying a heavy price on blood as we make our advance. While titanic land struggles wage, the Japanese home islands remain curiously untouched. In Japan proper, the cities are kilometers upon kilometers of vast suburbs, with densely populated city centers and massive industrial parks. These buildings all have a common theme. The vast majority of the building materials used across Japan is wood. Entire homes are made out of little more than wood and paper, our intelligence tells us. 
This creates an environment that is especially vulnerable to strategically strategic bombing. Their cities are tin literal tinderboxes, and all it takes to set them off is well-placed firebombs. Nice. And then eventually we'll unleash the SLBM. That'd be fantastic. And happy June, everybody. Now, although this is not the time for restraint, we must be willing to exhaust, ready to exhaust the any techers to win this war. Our U-boats uh, that lurk under the seas are fearsome weapons platforms. Modern U-boats, in addition to their torpedoes, have an arsenal of ballistic missiles that specialize in hitting land-based targets. The time to make use of these potent weapons is now. We shall authorize the Kyrgyz Marine Captains to start to surface and launch our deadly payloads on important targets of opportunity across the shores of the sphere. Submarine attack plus 50%. Holy crap. That's insane. But I love it. Alright, so how's supplies looking over here? Hey, it's looking way better already. Way, 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 way better. This guy's looking god-awful. Nineteen eighties depth charges, huh? Cool. Now we're leaving these all open, which is not great, but still. Do we just have radar on here? There we go. Is there nothing around here? Really? Ah, there it is. Kathmandu. There you go. That should be it, right? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Ooh, invade the Zond Hind. Is there anything else here? Nope. Rising Japanese suspicions. So if it gets high enough, will they actually go to war with us? Maybe. Couldn't tell you. Beautiful. But now the hour is upon us, my friends. Let's get our boys in place, get them ready to go. Uh, India should be not too difficult to take out. Federation of Malaya. But it's the entire sphere we're talking about here, so that's a lot. A little more oil, maybe? Now let's go with one, two. There you go. Economy's looking. Eh, eh, eh. Hey, better military police, though. I like that. Signal companies, engineers, why not? You guys say you can't do well here. Huh. You guys say you can do well here, so... Hopefully it'll be an easy blitz into them. Um, we're still moving around. Of course, we don't have as much as we'd like, but... Uh, I guess here we go. We'll try it out. Call everyone in. It's going to lag extremely badly, and then... You know, it is going to be what it's going to be. Add co-equal member of the sphere, huh? Oh, that's gonna lag extremely badly. Badly, badly, badly. World War Three? I thought it was four, but after years of the German war machine crashing over Western and Central Asia, the Reich's final target has been reached today. Perhaps the final war in history has broken out. The Japanese Empire and the German Reich are officially at war. As this goes to the press, hundreds of thousands of soldiers cross into the border of the sphere territory. The final destination being Tokyo. Four of them stands the Imperial Japanese Army ready to give their life for their homeland. With both Germany and Japan maintaining some of the largest nuclear stockpiles on Earth, a direct war between the two is almost guaranteed to lead to another nuclear exchange. As the mountains and rivers of Asia are stained red with blood, the skies over the sphere are tattered with smoke and jet fighters, and elements of the Kriegs Marine and the IJN clash in the waters of the Pacific. The question becomes how long will it take for one side to press a button, how many will be left to see the consequences? Bring the samurai to heel. Well, Damarum, we value so highly the dignity of life, how can we almost not also not value the dignity of death? No death may be called futile. Yukio Mishima. A clash of civilizations. And so here we are. Before we keep going, China is in the sphere. Our sphere. For now. And uh, yeah, we kind of cut them in half, so that's actually really good. So, and there you go. Um, in the meantime, do that. Um, well. I suppose we can do that. Why not? And now we're going to help push here. Because it is time to push like crazy. And we'll do... Sure, why not? Hello. Ah. Kind of got all screwed up. There you go. Good luck. Um, I don't care about going all the way through here. Uh, sure. Japanese folly, huh? Figured as much. 
I just want you to find their divisions and just completely destroy them. Oh god. What is this? Oh. Our fleet's here. Just shredding the Azand Hind fleet. Two. Oh yeah, keep throwing more stuff in there. 19, nice. Of course, it's pretty darn laggy, but what do you expect? You know, something like this going on. 25 subs sunk. Oh, happy July, everybody. And 25, 26. Ah, look at these guys. Yeah, channel's doing well. They just keep throwing more in. Oh, all right, whatever. Convoy, 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 convoy. And we sunk 50 destroyers. Nice. To Calcutta. There you go. Convoy going rogue with the planes finally dropping below the clouds. Shoran can now finally see the beautiful city of Punaka, the capital of Bhutan. It's too bad by the time Shoran is done with it, the city will be in ruins from all the fighting, but the thought of the magnificent battle and the following prestige gained from it knolls the sadness of destroying such a historic city for him. But I cannot ponder any longer as the doors had opened and the parachutes were deployed. Thousands of elite soldiers descending upon the city. Sure, I waited for five minutes before beginning to think something was wrong. Why was there no gunpowder sounds? Were they all using suppressors? Even that would make sense as there wasn't any flashes of the barrels going off. Oh, look at that. Sure, I demanded that the helicopter he was in, in landed to see what was happening. What happens if all his men were dead? The thought turned his mood from worry to, to from confused to worry. Sure, he wasn't about to die for some, some Bhutanese militia. Well, that's when he got to the ground. His fears weren't true, but he realized the reason why. There wasn't any Bhutanese soldiers there. His men were walking around so tense, but knowing that there wasn't any resistance apart from a few bad looks from the natives. A soldier rushed up to Shoran and told him how he had found notes from a barracks, which said all soldiers must get ready for extraction to fight the dramatic menace on the front lines. Shoran was slumped with a disappointment. With his dream of a great victory to prove himself to Goring dead in the water, but Shoran couldn't help show this, as his men were still watching. There will be other opportunities, you just have to wait. And so he straightened up and began to shout orders. All right, ma'am, we have secured the city, now let's take what we need and get ready for the next operation. Not the most helpful action you could have taken. Shona is once again robbed of glory. Oh. Yeah, we've got Kakoda already. Nice. I've got a Daka too. Bhutan, huh? Okay, I should probably do that right now. So far, probably not too bad. Got convoys here and there. Couple more convoys. Couple convoys. Nice, nice, nice. Good. This is gonna be slow going through all this part of channel. I mean, what do you expect, you know? Just kinda hanging out, huh? It's really not quite ideal, just hanging out. LBMs are nice and only clouds remain. Should have been a moment of silence with fallen, for without them, we would not have achieved density. Observers said we couldn't do it. The Japanese were too entrenched in Asia. They had too many men, their positions too entrenched. The Germans could never move the necessary materials that far east. We wouldn't have the planes to control the skies or the boats to contest the seas. All those fools, those naysayers were wrong. But today, the Reich stands victorious of the Japanese Empire. We've done it. The sun's been set on Japan. Total victory is ours. We could have achieved, we have achieved the NC. Germany's humbled a country that many considered untainable or unbeatable, especially in their own backyard. Look at this. This day shall go down in history as our greatest moment and victory yet. Asia belongs to the fatherland, and it will, very soon. Maybe not very soon, but soon. Stuff like that. Well, I guess you do have it like that, then that's fine. Asia, ship, lot. Ooh, we have ten. Look at that. Ooh, do you not have planes? Twenty, eighty, 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 hundred, hundred, eight hundred. 80, 80. Yeah, I should all have planes. Looks like some of them don't, though. Ah! It's 
because they don't. It's the point of having it if you're not doing that. Anything else here? Lancer, Destroyer. Not really using Destroyers too much, though. Lone Wolf, Concealment Expert, Marksman. Uh, let's do that one. I like that one a lot. Start seeing hopefully a lot of things through here. So far, not bad. I just know we take a lot of attrition and whatnot, though. Good. Hello. Ah, just a convoy, huh? Is that all? No task force? Forsk? Force? Beautiful. Ah! Twelve destroyers, twelve destroyers. Because I have nothing to do. Over here. Convoys. Convoys. Going rogue. Convoys. Hey, more stores. Nice. Losses. 57,000. My god, already? 60,000 from who? Oh, the Republic of China. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Three quarters of a million. Republic of Thailand, huh? Unitary Republic. We come over here to August. I mean, it's extremely laggy, but what else do you expect, really? Uh, maybe not here yet. Oh, this area would be very good to do. Ah, good. Oh yeah. Got really sinking everything they've got. And our allies, even though it's laggy, well they'll help invade why not too at some points. Jakarta. Good. We have no fuel, but still. We're gonna seize the sphere and going rogue. But the next one we'll read, of course, too. We slowly eliminate every enemy nation in the sphere one by one. Well, that's just extreme lag, isn't it? Extreme! <sighs> ah, that makes sense. Start them out. Oh. Koshu, Tsing King. Ah. Ah. There you go. Nice. Good. What do you want? Just go here. Uh oh. Northern China. Are they naval invading? Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's throw the Viet Minh. We could. We don't have to do it yet, though. More reactors? Sure, why not? Economy wise, growth is okay. Deficit's not great. Still going a little bit by a little bit. And convoys are dying like crazy. Problem with Indonesia. There's this battleship, nice. Alright, you might as well do that South China Sea too. Why not? Really get us involved now. Especially if they can't do anything about the convoys. Really start sinking them. And I'll probably start seeing some uh, the Japanese fleet here too. Oh yeah. They're having a 
field day with everything here. Oh god, oh god, here we go. Oh man. I kinda wanna enjoy this more. So they're death stacking, but we're definitely death stacking more. They're carriers look like they're retreating, they're disengaged. Two convoys, a carrier, seven light cruisers, a corvette, eighteen destroyers, a frigate, and four heavy cruisers. Beautiful. Do they keep throwing more more ships in? Oh, we lost three allied uh, destroyers. Oh, we actually lost one of our own, huh? That's an early destroyer. That's an old British one. Oh god, they're, they're still throwing them guys in here, aren't they? Nice. They have their planes too. We have all of our planes here as well. Oh, our battleship looks like it's disengaging. This battle is going on for a long time with 52 enemy destroyers sunk. Well, we lost four. Our carriers are still staying in there. Some of them are. Some of them are retreating already. Our battleship is still going in as well. It's kind of insane. They put in there another battleship. All right. God, the carriers coming back. We're retreating a little bit. And some more fleets coming back in and forth. Okay, then. Disengage. My god, what the heck just happened? So, here we are. Yeah. Shredded through a lot of enemy ships there. Go ahead and heal up for now. If you can. Oh, nice. Bro's gone. Going to clear one of the Viet Minh is fine. I forgot we'd have an extreme amount of lag right now. Uh, whoops. It's alright. Yeah. Where are y'all at? Oh, so most of this is already done, which is pretty good. Most of you guys have been kicked out of the sea already. Fantastic. As we are attempting to get to uh, mainland Ch Japan. We're already on mainland J China, but still. Uh oh. Oh god, don't tell me they're gonna call more people in for this. Okay, no, that's not bad. Oh, look at that! Another couple, uh, one or two, three, maybe, screens have been. Uh, screening fleets have been. Oh wow, you have another one too? Nice, awesome. Moving to repair in Darwin, that's smart. Can you build the port here? It's fine with me if we have to, I don't really care. Good. Nice, nice. Ah, see, I told you our allies would land here too, anyway, so. 13 combos are beautiful. 7,000 versus a third of a million, nice. This is gonna take time to get there. Ah, uh, there's a Japanese fleet. Yeah, we don't really want to engage, do we? Pull out. I didn't want to lose any of our capital ships. We've lost maybe two? Yeah. Yeah. The subs do it. Uh, subs, how are you looking? Up on top, nothing else. Uh oh. Oh, that's not good. Scored one good naval battle against us, which honestly didn't result in too many losses, so. Oh god, 1.2 months, that's terrible. So once capitulating, the Manchuria is gone, thank god. Very, very nice. To Korea, my friends. And the Japanese mainland. Not 
Okay. Nice. One day. I like one day repairs, please. Uh oh. Four thousand, cool. China's taking that already. Happy October. Oh wow, look at that. Holy cow. Lost an early tax up, so that's not really worth very much. Convoys. This is disgusting. They should feel ashamed of themselves. And come back. In all honesty, you must do that too. Oh boy. Oh, we're doing okay against them. The battleships are doing a tremendous amount of damage. Still. Pretty well overall there. Same amount of cruiser hulls, nice. Good. Good. Oh, and who do they have now? They got some dockyards there. It's not the state of Japan, is it Thailand? It might be Thailand. Ah, I was right, look at that. Ooh, that's not good. Nice. Doubles, huh? Vietnam? Probably not. Ah! Philippines. Come on, just completely shred their fleet, please. Oh. Great Asian War, huh? Very good, very good. Nice. How many more ships does Japan have left? Slowly drink it down there. Oh god. Laos is gone. Nice. Do we know anything about Japan? 
A lot of manpower. They're out of fuel like us. Pretty normal. Uh, up to 36 divisions left. And happy November. 47 special forces divisions. Navally, they have still over 400 ships. Five battleships, 11 carriers. A lot of their screens are dead. And their force is still pretty beefy. Of course, the more air force we kill, the less, the more fuel they have for all everything here. So, go into a full blockade. Oh God, here it goes. Just trying to destroy the Japanese Navy. Sink the carriers. And we did! Four carriers sunk. Oh god, that's so nice. Four carriers, a cruiser, four light cruisers, four destroyers, three corvettes, one frigate. Ah, oh, beautiful. Get in, boys. Japan is open. Some divisions here or something. Oh boy. Nice on the screen. Ah, oh, that's good. Beautiful. Come on, how many times do I need to set this back up? Oh, we lost some, some subs. That's not good. More subs. More subs. More subs. That's not a bad deal. We are destroying their navy, though. In the meantime, we're losing quite a few subs. Nice. Why don't you guys go repair? Case by promoted. Use your hub, or soul. Tons of convoys. Oh man, that was a heavy cruiser destroyer too. Well, that's not good. We don't have it for very long. Happy November, everybody, and now December. Oh God, look at that. Nice. 40 destroyers, three battleships, four cruisers. Fantastic. Fantastic. Lost some subs, lost more subs. They just love destroying our subs, man. Cool. Make sure we're on the same page here and do that. Huh. 
<laughs> Our navy's getting pretty small. Oh boy. Repairing a whole bunch, huh? Well, we should have them soon. Oh, peace conference is over. Who else do we have left besides Japan? Oh, the comes with Japan. There you go. Cherry blossoms slowly fall all across Japan as smoke and ash permeate the air. Nations of complete ruins after a devastating campaign in the home isles with starvation, lack of housing, and a general hum humanitarian crisis in every nook and cranny. The one mighty, once mighty empire has completely fallen, but fallen to the German army. The pro flag is taken down over Tokyo, from Tokyo, and Swasco rises over the land just like its sun. The Japanese empire and all its imperial glory has fallen, and a giant German boot pressed firmly against the emperor's bloody face. Already. Works have begun to prepare for permanent occupation to forever scare German dominance in the Orient and Asia proper. The former Japanese sphere, having stretched over the countless nations, oceans, lands of people, is now being brutally div divvied up between the German high command and caring little about the peoples of welfare. Goring has been very vocal on making sure that Japan remains isolated and weak from the rest of the war by demanding that only the main Japanese islands stay under united Japanese government, even if it's a military occupation. The islanders can starve for all Goring cares, as he never wants to risk a Japanese rebellion from stirring. Those are the Japanese islands are planned to be given to a naval authority to deal with a very large Japanese fleet. The world's already reeling from such a massive event, as now the economies from the last remaining free nations of the world are reeling, collapsing from such an economic powerhouse being dismantled so brutally. While the cherry blossoms may continue to fall over Japan, they will all touch down, burn, and decaying, as if the unison of the spirit of Japan, and to the victory the spoils. So now for us to divvy the spoils, both the Chinese so weak a chance of div divvying them up will be available to us as well. Because really, the main enemy is China. In the end here. Because we gotta take them out too. <laughs> well, this doesn't take too much lag, but my god, China's gonna be a big old problem for us. But honestly, it's not going to be that much of a problem, honestly. Their navy, they don't have a navy. They have a lot of bodies, but it doesn't mean they're very good. And besides, we have almost... We have 7.5 million manpower, and our technology is probably way better than them. Ah, military commandant from Japan. I like how they sell Korea. Ah, top. Nice. Military verwaltung ost Indien. Philippinen. Schroter. Kunel. Beautiful. Ah. Bewaltung Sud-Ost-Asien. Sud-Ost-Asien. Erk Berenfänger. Burma. He doesn't seem really happy. Hindustan. No. Ost-China. Nöte Bewaltung Nord-China. Ah! Glass von Staffenberg, of course. That there. Don't mind doing this one, I guess. All right. I'm gonna repair everybody first. Beautiful. Go then run out. Only clouds remain. German Germanian cherry blossoms. Through the victors of spoils, Japan is rich in culture and has produced a plethora of rich and beautiful pieces of art. Our Fuhrer, even the, ever the connoisseur, has already picked out several treasures that he would like to add to his personal collection. The pillaging of Japan shall begin in earnest. Industrial machinery, valuable metals, and more shall be brought back for the benefit of all Germans. The streets of Germania will be full of cherry blossoms of victory. More growth by 2.5%, increased liquid reserves by 15 billion. Power begins to improve, more stability, political power. Industrial uh, equipment begins to improve too. The setting sun. Fire. The first thing you see when you enter Tokyo is fire. Only a few days ago, the city was in one of the most prosperous metropolitans of the world. And the final days before the capture, all the Japanese people living there had to worry about was the distant threat of encroaching German soldiers. Goran took out another cigarette as he approached the center of the city. He regretted not to come to the place before the invasion. It looked like it used to be beautiful. But that was way before the Great Eastern War, one that made both the Valkyries tiny in comparison. Goran's men had triumphant, or triumphed at but at what cost. One of the leading nations in culture and technology now is smoking ruin of a state. As the Führer continued walking, he could hear the cries of begging and desperate men before gunshots and silence. The Japanese spirit to continue fighting until this end has not worked in their favor, considering the stench coming from shallow holes around the street. 
Where has the world come to? The sooner of humanity's greatest achievements now uh, are just glorified mass graves. All this goring thought as he walked through the streets with his best man. But these doubts were already disappearing. He needed to organize the entirety of Asia under German rule, and that doesn't happen in a day. And so the thoughts of the death of Asian freedom went back to, went to the back of his mind, just like the, all the other conquests. There wasn't time for regret, there was time work to be done. The empire that threw in the sun in power. Now as dark as the moon. While Japan may be defeated, uh, their resistance has not been. This will cost heavily in manpower until solved. Oh god. Must rebuild the Japanese bases. They purpose to campfire time. Japan is perhaps the most alien of all other occupations yet. The culture is completely different from anything we've seen yet. There's a clear language barrier between our occupation forces and the local populations, which makes controlling the country a difficult task. With some convincing, we could use the Emperor, who is already in our custody, as so it happens, to make an appeal to the Japanese military police. They can't buy tie. These men see the Emperor's word as law within a couple words. We could have the entirety of that force at a beck and call, which would be a huge help in controlling the local population of Japan. What's the purpose of Camp Ai Tai to serve a message? Absolutely. So do this. Uh, Nanjing, huh? Oh, so we actually need them stationed there. Okay, interesting. Well, alright. Well, I'll get these guys in there. How many divisions do we need in total? Uh, we need 12. I'll take you. Two. Yeah. Head on him. Right there. Taiping. Nice. Alright, so three in Nanjing. And then in Wuhan. Three in Changsha. What was the last one? And Fujian. Kunming, Fujian. Oh, there. Where? Somewhere in Fujian. Okay. Well, we'll get there first. So, right now, that much. That. Um, inflation's still the same, not bad, not bad. Yeah. So, this will be helps out quite a bit, actually. Wow, 15 billion, Jesus. Wow! That's green, finally. 3.8% growth? Holy shnikes. Korea question. One of the many events or questions that arose following our victory over the Japanese is what we should do with Korea. Korea lies in a vital area, imperative for control over Asia. They aren't the only influence who has an interest in the area. The newly stated Japanese collaborators have respectively requested that we leave the Korean Peninsula and they only allow the heavily Japanese land to stay within their borders. The generals within our administration point out that Korea is an area vital for supplying occupation in Japan. Without a moving supplies, it is a more complex affair. Likewise, the Japanese retain more of their influence in the region. We must simply not allow the Orange to slip back from our control. Should stop to uni unify Korea under our control, of course. Carve it up. German occupation in Japan has achieved its goal. We have thoroughly combed through the aisles of all its valuables, or valuables. <laughs> Important industrial machinery has been dismantled and sent back home. The population has been thoroughly passed five forced to accept our domination total defeat. Organized resistance is almost non-existent at this point. Our mission is therefore incomplete. It is finally time to send them in home, in their place. We should divide up the people. Using propaganda campaigns that have caused schisms in their beliefs and unity, as if they are back under a disunited Japan. The idea of a rising up again against us wouldn't even cross their minds. We should divide the people so thoroughly that will never unite again. Weakening Japanese resistance with weak Japanese resistance. Oh god. Still weakly stability is really bad. 
civic dominance, a new administration, the Eastern and naval authority shall be established promptly. Similar to the military of Avaltung, the authority shall be a governing body to patrol and protect our new positions and allies in the Pacific and East Asia. The backbone of this force shall be made up of ships we manage to take position of from the Japanese Navy. This force shall be highly mobile to ensure the Reich is a permanent presence under newly conquered lands. Also keep newly freed nations in the areas of check as well. No one will dare to act on any of our possessions or allies with the mobile army always on call. Barnacles, what are you doing? Get over there fast so we can betray China. That's really nice. It's not bad. Can we get more growth or can we? That, oh, so. Oh, we did a temp tax cut. Oops, I wanted to hit temp tax cut. That's going to destroy this. Get a lot more growth though. It's nice. Hmm. 5% growth is pretty good. But that's a god awful amount of deficit. Jesus Christ, what did I do that for? Oh. Ah, but happy February though now, everybody. Wouldn't be goring without blowing up the budget and debt. Thirty-two billion, huh? Carve it up. Fifteen days, we'll have that event too. From the rising sun to the German eagle, the Chinese delegates sat very eagerly in the conference room, knowing the day they dreamed of had finally arrived after decades of oppression. The Japanese yoke had been thrown off, and an era of Chinese prosperity never seen since the days of Ming was about to begin. Even the most anti-Chinese unity warlord was looking forward to this event as they knew their work towards defeating Japan by helping Goring would result in the freedom. They all felt uncomfortable with the fact that the German soldiers had been in Chinese territory non-stop since the start of the war, but they excused it as they knew it was a necessary sacrifice. And finally, after what seemed like days of waiting, Goring himself walked into the conference room and sat down. The leaders waited eagerly for his first words, which was hopefully about their award. Greetings, gentlemen. Thank you so much for attending in such short notice. Goring began with a slight smile, and together we have triumphed with the inferior Japanese empire and we come out stronger than before. The German flag now flies in the land of the rising sun, a triumph to never be forgotten. This is the clearest answer someone could give on why German is a true leader or proper ruler of the world. With these words, suddenly the atmosphere around the room changed from one of excitement to one of confusement. What was he talking about? Around this time, representatives barged in from all outside and quickly whispered to the state's representatives. While collectively began to look severely worried, Goring continued, We all know we had promised your freedom in exchange for helping us against Japan, but all deals have a twist, and we have found our own. Countless reports have come through of just how barbaric a culture truly is. A backwards fight from control by evil Jewish warlords the best, and a downright Judaistic haven of worse. We can no longer allow such a place to exist as independence spits in the face of Aryan supremacy. Uh, this roars and shouts went up around the room with every Chinese leader trying to shout one over one another. We can't do this. We have a deal, you German scum. Our men will easily beat back the German invaders from our homeland. Thousands of Chinese dead, all for nothing. Let's continue until a squad of Wehrmacht soldiers had arrived and positioned themselves around the conference uh, walls. The shots went to angry mumblings. They all looked around the room in fear. What were they planning? It is useless to resist this news. Your so-called armies have already been dealt with. That what? Do you think? Uh, do you think not think the constant German presence and your pathetic excuses for our states want, was it intentional? Our men were ready to seize every uh, vital government building as soon as we gave the signal, which was a few hours ago. Your armies are in chaos, surrounded on all sides and being slaughtered in the thousands every minute. Give up now, and your people will be saved. A brutal campaign. You will wish for the Japanese back if it happens. And with that, Goring concluded his speech. The entire room goes quiet, most of them accepting their fate. Even the most stubborn can hear the gunfire outside and the distinctly German voices being dominant at the gunfire. But what happens to us? Where will we go? Asked the Shang-Chi leader, sweat dripping off his face. Well, Goring said with a small grin as he motioned for his men to aim the guns. We can't allow undesirables in the new eastern lands now, can we? Chinese freedom entered, but only in, in German imperialism left. And we are now going to war with good old China. What did you think was this going to happen? You were literally the last supposedly free nation on earth that allied with us. For real, and we took off all those other lands and made them military of Avaltings. Why did you think we made sure that we owned them in the end and not you? I mean, let's be real here. Oh, I thought we were going to go to war them. Oh, look at this. This is ugly. Oh, so here we go. Military Commandant von Japan. Military Commandant. And Military of Avaltings Korea. North China has taken a lot. This is really weird. 
Us China, which is split in this with center. Uh, Sud China by Spido. And North, North China is back here too. What the heck? We did destroy China very weirdly. That's very odd, but uh. Oh, whoops. Oh, whoops. Oh no, what happened there? The entire world now is ours. Uh, you know what? And maybe we might do. That's better. Now the entire world is ours. Look at that. But I was trying to do Pacific Dominance as well. Oh. And agree with the IJM. Even after Japan's defeat, the fleet remains massive, modern, and dangerous. Japan was certainly one of the world's foremost naval powers, and even their powerful navy is unquestionably powerful. Uh, the International Surface Fleet is exactly what we need to project power in the Pacific Ocean. We should at least send like one center for cruise marine officers to take stock of our new ships and raise crews so we can effectively man them. Adapting these new ships into our navy's command structure will greatly increase the power on the waves. Japan's bases. Uh, many of the Japanese dockyards and port facilities have been extensively damaged during the conflict. Many have been so thoroughly bombed that even our smaller ships have trouble docking and disembarking bottle supplies. Mooring any number of warships in nearly any of our Japanese dockyards is a real headache. Worse is the fact that we have nearly no capa capability to repair or maintain these ships. With Americans now eyeing our positions, or they're dead now, we need to concentrate on repairing our ports so we can once again project naval power from Japan. Our ships in the Pacific need the facilities to be able to uh, independently repair and maintain their ships, especially since they are so far away from the fatherland. Our efforts will have to have the added benefit of taking us, uh, giving us the range to strike American shipping, which should keep them humble enough to leave our interests in Asia alone. We must rebuild the Japanese bases. At least our naval authority. Fair Goring has finally come forward to the world today to announce the finalization of the Eastern Naval Authority's creation. The world shall watch in equal parts fear and awe as it grasp the extent and might of the Reich and its new conquests. Let them quake, let them stare, German influence stretches unbroken from Japan to France, and everything in between. We have no rivals for who even comes close to matching our might in the field. Break the unbroken line. The Japanese people still stand defiant. These proud people are still passively defy rule, even though our victory over them is total. Little head is pet he or head is paid to the collaboration government, and to send against the government is high, and since they see these leaders as nothing more than upstarts. If we're going to control the Japanese people, we need to control their emperor. Their people need to see that he's not a god, he's a simple man, and a broken one at that. We'll force the emperor to be our puppet and force our will in Japan, he cannot refuse, for the alternative is to service his death. The chrysanthemum throne shall lie empty. Move weak Japanese resistance. Move overstretched German overstretched garrisons in the Far East. Focus you will change. Cool. It'd be a real shame if our neighbor was somehow deleted, you know? Whoop! What do we do at the end? Oh, whoops, whoops! Whoops! Oh god, oh, there goes the Navy. Whoopsie. What happened to the Navy? Who knows? We don't. Can we actually balance the budget if we get rid of the entire military? I heard it's a little bit there, but still. Didn't do it very much there at all, really. Deficits goes up. Inflation. We'll see what happens. So good only, though. I wish we could get to exceptional. Japanese bases are nice. Happy April, everybody. Inflation's going way down, huh? 4.9%. 55.1%. Huh. Alright. Military demands. Prison construction's good. Very nice. Wow. Extreme amount of lag. You know what? This is causing us too much lag. Oh no! Oh, what also is lagging is because... Okay, so the game is a little bit glitched right now. See, Cameroon came back. Yorba Land came back. So that's a whole bunch of crap to us. Okay, so that's still really bugged in the game, which really sucks. Yeah, that's green. 4.7 is not as good, but still.
So what if we want max cities? We got rid of a lot of this. No military civvies. That would help deficit a little bit instead of spending a crap on crap ton on a uh, civilian spending. You don't mind, of course. Just to see what would happen. It's only the economy. Breaking or break the unbroken. So the books do a change though. Yeah, but maybe not. Well, don't need division recovery if you have no divisions, right? Interesting. 4.2, huh? No money there. Nuclear stockpiles. What are social things like? Population grew by 14 million. Ranks of the group poor grew by 13 million. Almost roughly that much. 330,000 women left the workforce. Uh, almost 7.2 million people learned to read, while 1. almost 1.8 million people were enrolled in college. 2 million died from preventable disease. Really, 3 million. Agricultural yields increased. Largest trading partner is Italy. 2.6 million received a state pension, and our military personnel grew by 5,000. GDP per capita went way down. Poverty is going up a little bit more last year. Interesting. And poverty's not really getting any worse, which is good. So, modern industrials. Oh, we could have gone. Oh, oh, we didn't get this one. If we got to functional administrative systems, we got 10% more uh, base tax population, more stability, more data political power, better recruit population factor, better drift defense, better social uh, spending modifier, needed consumer goods would go would decrease. <sighs> you know, you try. You try real hard. Trade wise, we're zero there and zero uranium. Hmm. Negative eight production units, huh? Oh, this represents the monetary value of the trade occurring in our nation. The import values are taxed at a rate of 10%. Interesting. Happy May, though. Because of all the imports we have. So 4.3 now, 12 billion. Huh. It's going up higher now, which is nice. Yeah, that's about where we left it. Social spending, science expenditures are fine. Yeah. What do we have here? That's costing us so much. Maintenance, logistics, procurement funding, R&D funding, interesting. But this is the last focus we've had. Break the unbroken line. Oh, here we go. Last couple of ones. Then is near. Not even the three biggest powers in the world could stand up to us. The U.S. is split up and subdued. Japan is balkanized and the rogue state is left but a distant memory. Who there is left to stop us now? Final preparations must be made for the final act of complete German dominance. The Kriegsmarine shall continue to sail. Well, sort of. The Kriegsmarine, once a mighty a high seas fleet, grew up from the ash in which it was left, left in after World War I. A mighty navy which managed best the Royal Navy in World War II in both the U.S. Navy and the IJM. Truly the head and backbone of the Reich. From now on, it shall sail every sea and coast in the world to prove that it is not even the water safe from our rule. Lufthansa continues to soar. On December 8, 1908, papers claimed that men, man wouldn't be able to fly for at least one million years. Nine days later, Kitty Hawk was successfully tested. Since then, the air has been one of the most important things in all of warfare. Our army may have been the ones conquering the land, but it would have been impossible without the men in the air and the bombs raining from them. We should conduct massive air force patrols across the entire world to show our dominance permanently. Our plans shall never land, or planes shall never land. Glory to Lufthansa. The Wehrmacht marches on. The Wehrmacht, the reason why we control the entire world under our benevolent rule, the reason why the German Reich is able to exist in the first place, from its routes and the glorious Prussian army of the 17th and 18th century, uh, to the ones that conquered most of the world. Our army shall march on. We should launch parades across the entire world showcasing its glory so people understand why it's the best, and we are the world's one and only true ruler. And literally the only ruler, because everyone else is dead. And that's the way we like it. Nice. Auto payments, hmm. social expenditures, admin expenditures. So are we going to lose anything here? Uh, that's getting worse. Yeah, secondary schooling is not good. That's fine. Yeah. Could have gone there. It's getting worse. Not good. It's okay. Yeah, that's actually not doing bad either. Huh. Interesting. Semi modern multi roll. Cool. Oh, it's part of the problem that we have a lot of. Uh, yeah. Look at that. 
Oh yeah, and all these other guys who have uh, planes and whatnot. Yeah, this is what's also costing us a pretty penny too. Forgot about these guys. Nope. And happy June first, everybody. Honestly, we didn't have that big of an air force. I mean, we did pretty well with an air force, but you know, still. Oh, Forty-three ball. Sure, why not? An army of the world. Shuna paced her in his brand new gleaming office in the U.S. back and forth over and over again until his feet nearly left a mark on the floor. His head was uh, bubbling with thoughts and none of them were good. For someone who just got possession of one of the most prized German puppets in the entire globe, he was still severely dissatisfied. He just felt displeased somehow. In his unraveling brain, his work was done. But the rest of the German high command, Shuna knew. His job was uh, not done. Uh, his, he, oh, he, his job was done. The entire world was under the rule of the Aryans, and yet, at the same time, not. For Shuna. Uh, as long as Ernst and Mensch live, the Aryans have not achieved the rightful state as rulers of this earth, of course. Just even the thought of le people lesser than Germans having some sort of autonomy and livelihoods made him feel sick. He knew that they should be ruling themselves. Heck, his entire world was full of these pathetic worthless maggots. He should know. And yet Goring stands by and does nothing. The pathetic little spineless run should have left leadership years ago. Yet there he stands still, preparing his big speech. And apparently his is a big achievement. And he could have done anything without Schorner, the, uh, the mastermind behind all of it. All of a sudden, something snapped in Shorn's mind. To an outsider, they might have thought that the extreme stress he put himself under finally made him so go slightly insane. To which Shorn writes would reply that they simply re realized the truth and then shot that uh, outsider. And to Shorn, the truth that, is that the Aryan race won't survive unless he takes control, even if he has to kill every last unbeliever to do so. And then finally, he sits atop of the world. His work can, of course, begin. And I looked and bowed a pale horse, and his name that sat on, sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. I'm not sure we're actually going to save any money here, but you know what, whatever, we're doing this still anyways. Is this a smart thing to do? Of course not, but whatever. What are we looking for the... Ah, that's it went quite a bit down. This didn't get hurt too much more. Inflation's not bad. We'll see how this ends up, because military spending should be even further down now. Fair O Islands, huh? Nice. Ah, and these planes, I, I can't get, these aren't really planes, but I can't get rid of these things, so. So this is the skimpiest we can possibly be, with 7 billion in a yearly deficit, which is not bad, honestly. Because we didn't do military austerity. Oh, we actually have a surplus now. So we got less growth, but now we actually have a surplus. So we have actual good growth, and a year supply, so if we give it enough time, we're just deleting the entire military, we should be okay. Of course, we still have military austerity. I don't really want to do civilian austerity. Um, yeah. Rusting boat. Gunther used to be proud of being a sea battalion member, having to fight tooth and nail for the position on a very prestigious ship, one of the biggest destroyers he had ever seen, and most definitely the most beautiful with its insignias dotting the hole in your endless amounts of firepower. Well, that used to be the most beautiful. Any crew member could clearly see that as the ship is decaying, with rust gathering at the edges of the walls, guns sticking longer to aim and fire, and even reports of water seeping in from the lower decks. From the outside, it may seem fine, but on the inside, the crew knows the ship is slowly decaying and dying. And yet, no, one, no work can be done. No funds for repairs have come in from the creek and marine management, but the constant patrolling and removal of threats must continue. Every shot from a rebel ship leaves a permanent dinner marker, and slowly, living conditions become worse and worse. Grumblings of discontent has gone from uh, becoming uh, quiet whispers at late-night talks to main discussion topics in almost every conversation. The captain blames it all on the Kriegs Marine being bloated, which is incredibly ironic considering how stretched it is at the same time. The waters the ship has to patrol to cover to patrol uh, seemingly get larger every day, and more and more threats get under their radar from this lack of concentration. 
Gunther knows. The real reason, though, the state, and it's clear to see that even though the world serves the Berlin government, the Berlin government cannot serve the world. While the news is sparse on the ship, word still gets out on how things are doing in the outside world, and as of late, the birth on corruption, famine, mass poverty, rebellions, and decaying management have been getting more frequent. And considering the state of the ship, Gunther dismiss, doesn't dismiss the rumors. He knows that this race, something very bad is about to ha bound to happen soon, just like a ship, one bad hole will cause it to go under. Back under the start of the Goring's reign, he used to joke with his buds that the government will sink before the ship does. Now he doesn't have to find it funny. He just finds it realistic. And a dramatic world. Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein Führer, Ein Welt. The world's not firmly under grasp. All that is left to do and proclaim it as ours. After all, who would stop us? There you go. Have fun with that. G I W I. War public eye in Ukraine? Sure. Beautiful. So it says we have eight factories, which we have way more than. Oh, actually, poverty's getting worse. Look at that. But, that's not looking nice. 3.3 is not bad. Inflation is decent. Yeah, overall, not bad. Hey, 54.9? That could be a way worse. And our plane shall never land. Glory to the little fuffle. Glory, glory, glory. Still putting up a lot of roads through here. Which should give us ever so slightly, slightly, slightly more growth. A rude awakening. Lena couldn't even name her village on a map. She had always lived a quiet, quiet life. In a small village with only a singular road out of, the one that led to the big city in the far distance. Sometimes, when the smog cleared, she could see the taller buildings like some apartments and even a surprise skyscraper. But after partial unification, and for Lena, life seemed good. For her, life was fine when Russia was just a mess of soldiers fighting each other and they never bothered her town. But even better after unification began, with the government deciding to invest slightly in her town, allowing full electricity and already clean water supply. Times only looked up for her, and that is until the Germans arrived at least. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. The new order. The victor shall never will never be asked if he has told the truth, says Adolf Hitler. Oh, look at that. Um, when they Well, they didn't themselves, but the middle birds, their planes of war, did. When the war was happening, they only went to the city in the distance. So it didn't bother her too much, apart from being said uh, that the, they caused the skyscraper to collapse, but the worst day of her life happened after the war ended. One random day, which must have been at least a year after the war ended, planes flew over her head um, once more, and this time her village wasn't spared. She was just getting away, getting flowers for a necklace she was making, and hidden in just in time to see their entire life be destroyed in front of her. Now things have only gotten worse for Lena. Terrified, mourning, and completely lost in life, she headed into the big city, began to scrape out of living there. The German harassment didn't even end in the city, with constant looting, shootings, and more happening every week from the soldiers. Just when Lena was going to end her life from the misery, she heard rumors of a resistance. The very idea of it excited her. Could it be a way to fight back against the Germans? After some work, she finally found their headquarters and joined a large group of seemingly angry partisans, several of them were armed. The son of their leader who had a map behind him and seemingly news snippets about Goring's health. Soon we shall strike at the Reich, their leader proclaimed, with cheers all around. Everyone began to tell them their plans uh, once the rebellion begins, and or began, or begun, and eventually turned to Lena. Lena, finally feeling like she had a chance of freedom, finally s said what she had been thinking ever since she went flower picking that day. I won't lay down dead until every Nazi has her head on a spike. Oh, we have more. Oh, look at that. Globalis Germanisch Reich. GGR, the Grossa Germanisches Reich, no, Global, Global is Germanic Reich. So is that it for us? That should be it for us. I know we have the other focuses, which I never finished. Because I didn't want to do, uh, I don't want to be relying on MEFO bills. 2.69.53? Huh, not bad. So, it sounds like there might be some resistance someday, yeah. I didn't want to do this one, so... Oh, I didn't, do, I didn't do this one. Whoops, my bad. Rack's final defenses. Well, I guess it's safeguard the Volk, I guess. I guess there, I mean, there's no point to do it now. Cost and billions, plus 0 0.02, but whatever. Greatly increase the load to the militarists, which is good. Um, I think that might be it. I'm mean, usually we'll get an end thing saying that we'll have that, but still. Enable hard mode. See, full bus similar to those of full custom difficulty slider. Cannot be reversed. Well, we don't really need that, so... I think that might be the end of it here for us. Ah, growth is way worse. The plus is actually really good. Temp tax hike. That barely affected the growth. And 44 billion? Well, that's not bad. I mean, if we kept playing, we could honestly get rid of rid of the, the debt here. That's actually looking really good. 44.5 billion. Nice. Well... That's looking pretty good, except for this whole part of Africa. The world's looking like it's in a good place. Fun! Lots of good time. Good fun. 
Germania, Welt, Hauptstadt, Germania is here. Going as one, as planned. <sighs> what a good man. So I think that's going to be it for us here, guys. If you enjoyed the campaign like I did, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know what you thought of it. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.